You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Extreme Weight Loss After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Extreme Weight Loss After Show. This song gets me going every time. Wait, let it drop. Let it drop. Need some stairs. There we go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Extreme Weight Loss After Buzz. I'm your host, Jackie Powell, and in the booth, we've got Steven. Hey, guys. Good to be here. <laughs> and we have, actually, a special guest with us, Nick Iadonisi, celebrity trainer, gym owner. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We are missing Morgan today. She couldn't be here tonight. Um, we miss her very much. But Nick's here to fill in the big shoes. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can handle that one. I'll do my best though, for sure. All right. So tonight we had Brandy, 29-year-old, um, beautiful, beautiful woman. Um, right off the bat, what did you guys think about Brandy? First impressions. Um, definitely beautiful. I definitely can uh, agree with that. And uh, one thing I, I liked to see throughout the show was uh, she was very positive. She was positive. Very, very positive. Yeah. Dealing with some deep issues, you know, as a childhood that carries along with you. So um, not an easy thing to overcome. Steven? Um, I was worried because it seemed like she had some really thin skin. Like, uh, not in the literal sense, but like when, when she talks about how during her pageant days, like what set her off was little comment cards, mm -hmm. was that she never learned as a kid or as a young adult to learn how to let things roll off your skin. She took everything way too personally. So I feel like... I was worried that any time throughout the weight loss that Nick was hard on her. I mean, uh, Chris was <laughs> <laughs> Nick. I do get hard on her. Yeah, that, that, way, yeah. that, uh, that Chris was hard on her, that she would take it too personally and have a relapse. That's yeah. what I was worried about. Yeah, I felt um, she hold a lot, held, holds a lot back. And that's different from other people. Other people automatically kind of go in and express everything. But she did. She was kind of, um, she kept things in a little bit, which I felt was a little different from other people that we've seen before. Um, I mean, bottom line is you got to get these things out in the open and, and uh, you know, like was, uh, it was noted, um, you know, if you, have, if you have thin skin when you're trying to accomplish something, a goal as big as she was, um, you know, you do have to be able to take things, uh, you know, and, and run with them and not really hold back and let that drive you into a hole even deeper than she was in in terms of overcoming this, this lifetime battle of what she was dealing with. So. Yeah, so she, as a little girl, she did pageants, and um, during her doing pageants, she started gaining a little bit of weight, and the judges started writing like little criticisms like, beautiful girl, but she needs to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And through that, it kind of broke her, like you were saying. Um, she had not the thickest skin, and she decided to just quit, and that's kind of what attributed to the weight gain. I kind of... Like, this kind of makes me a little angry. Um, not that they wrote, like, gaining little weight, because it's kind of like they're, they don't really have a good way to say it. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no yeah. good way to say, hey, like, you're a little bit thicker than other girls in this pageant. Mm -hmm. And when it's beauty pageant, that is what they're going yeah. for. They want that size. But what I'm mad at is her mom or her dad, whoever's involved in bringing her those pageants, because it takes an adult to actually sit someone down and explain something to somebody mm -hmm. and kind of they're the ones who control her eating habits. They're the ones who control what she does activity-wise. So you don't even need to tell your kids that they're fat or anything. You just need to get them involved in more active things as opposed to staying at home and playing video games or eating like that. So a good thing that her mom could have done is like, hey, yeah. well, let's go ahead and get you in dance. Yeah. Dance is a great way to lose weight. You don't mm -hmm. have to say, hey, you're fat. Let's lose weight. You have to say, hey, I think dance would be really good for you. It'd be mm -hmm. a great talent to learn. No, I think that's an awesome point. I mean, brings me. I was the support system you know there's not a support system that, that that's there to um you know to comfort and also keep it real you know i think there's got to be that level of of reality and uh, i couldn't agree more with you to be honest with you 
Yeah, and I feel at that age when you tell any young girl anything kind of negative, whether it comes to the way they look or, you know, that, that's a lot to take on at such a young age. Mm -hmm. That kind of sticks with you, yeah. which we see with her. And then another thing that we saw in the opening, she brought up her girlfriend, Kiara, and we see. So Chris comes in and he surprises her while she's doing makeup at a pageant. Mm -hmm coincidentally, uh, she's doing makeup at a pageant, and Chris comes and surprises her and says that he's gonna do the transformation. What did you guys think about uh, his her girlfriend's reaction when she found out that she was going to do the transformation? She wasn't very positive, Let's, she wasn't. Her face was like, what? Her face, it wasn't even like what, it was like, I don't care. I don't know why these people are getting in my business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she was. I kind of was upset about it. It's like, man, this is your girlfriend. You you would think that you'd want the best for her. But she's over here kind of thinking of herself like, I don't really want you to change. And I didn't like that. It just shows how, um, you know, selfishness can creep in there for sure. And again, yeah. coming back to um, the support system, how important it is. If, if you don't have people around you, you know, like if, if someone's trying to be successful, you know, you want to surround yourself with people that want to be successful. If you want to be successful in a weight loss um, journey, you need people around you that support you and are going to help you develop those habits. Um, and ultimately, uh, it's easy. You know, I see this all the time as a trainer. People fall into prioritizing so many other things above themselves, especially a relationship. And um, if, if, you're, if, if one of your goals is to make um, your partner happy um, and they're okay with you being o overweight, um, you know, that's, that's just leading to a, a, um, a crash at some point or at the end of the day, you know, if you really care about that person, you don't want to outlive that person. You know what yeah, I mean? And, and I, I just think it's important. Like, Hey, I want you to live a longer life. It's not about like, Hey, I'm okay with it now, but you know, it allowed her to, to just not become a priority and, uh, and lose track of herself. And, yeah. I thought it was kind of funny that Chris knew and saw that right away. Like her reaction, Chris knows everything. Chris, <laughs> like he does, he, he spots things out, but so she did her weigh-in. She was 329 pounds, and Chris gave her uh, a goal to lose 90 pounds in 90 days. What do you think about that challenge? I mean, that's what she's there for. You know, that's what she she submitted for. That's what she uh, she knew what she was signing up for. And um, you know, it's a lot of weight, but at the end of the day. Um, you know, I always say if I were able to have control over my clients every single day and, and what they ate and how they trained, um, I think it's quite realistic, you yeah. know, for that time. But it's when they get away from you that that's when it gets difficult. You know, when mm -hmm. I see them three hours a, a week instead of, you know, six, seven, ten hours a week. So uh, I think it's pretty realistic and I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a big goal. But once again, that's what she signed up for. And I mean, a pound a day is not that difficult to do. I mean, once you're, once you're at weight in the 300s, once you raise your activity level just a little bit, it really does kind of shed off a little mm -hmm. bit easier. Like in my swing of losing weight, like I'd have weeks where I'd lose three or four pounds at a time. Yeah. Wow. And it's just, I'm sure like the 90 day period you have probably the first 25 days, she probably didn't lose a single pound because it was just water storing. And then I'm sure after that, it was like two, three, four, mm -hmm. five pounds a day. Because yeah. mm -hmm. it's kind of, the, the, the amount of weight you lose is proportionate to the amount of weight you're trying, like you have. Mm -hmm. So if you're 500 pounds in 90 days, you could probably lose probably anywhere from 100 to 130 a pounds. A large amount, yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny to say that because within the first 20 days, she lost four inches off of her arms. I thought it was crazy. When they she went to the uh, rehab place, they measured her arm and it was 24 inches mm. i thought that was nuts it was like 24 inches that's that's a waste yeah. and her arm was that but in the first 20 days she lost 20 or she lost four inches off of her arms and so we went into the fight or flight uh challenge i love when chris does this because this is a time where he really gets in deep and finds the deep issue mm. of what's going on with them and her issue of course was um not feeling good enough wanting to do these pageants and um, not feeling like she looked the part or was the part. Mm -hmm. And um, Chris always tries to, when they're doing these exercises, he gets it out of them like, tell me what's wrong, what's going on? And he made the football field or wherever they're working out her runway. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of crazy. He was like, w walk the runway, which she wants to do as a being a pageant queen, but with exercises. And what she said during that was, it didn't matter who I was, I'm just fat. No one will want you if you're fat. And that's what she said her dad says. And I think that plays into what you were saying, Stephen, that you have to be really careful what you tell your kids. And her dad said, you know, no one will want you if you're fat. Like, I guess trying to inspire her to lose the weight, but not. 
I mean, really I think, the best way. I think the biggest thing is like people don't know how to talk to people who are depressed because of their weight. Mm -hmm. It's like when I was growing up I, and gaining weight, my parents would always say like you need to lose weight, like you should start walking more and things like that. But it's not about that. It's more about you need to take it on yourself if you want to lose it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. It's like you cannot convince somebody to have motivation. They need to find it themselves or they will never get it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of that's the biggest detriment. But it's also kind of the, the biggest thing that people don't understand when they're trying to explain to people how to do anything or how to start losing weight. So it's really difficult in this manner. And I think, I think she was probably exaggerating saying that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure her dad didn't say... People are not going to want you if you're fat. I'd hope not. Yeah, I don't think that's he said really that. That's really hurtful. Like, yeah. my, my cousin is going through this right now. She's mm -hmm. not that yeah. big, but right now she's a teenager and she's slowly gaining weight. And I talk to her about it all the time. And I'm the only one she'll talk to about it because of my experience. Mm -hmm. But I'm very careful to be like, you know what? I want you to make a choice, make your choices right now because I don't want you to be unhappy in the future. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think nobody's going to want you, but I think you yourself are going to not like what you are yeah. later in the future. And I want you to make that change now before you feel that way. Yeah. I always, I always try to do my best to bring it back to facts. Um, you know, like you said, it's hard. You can't just convince somebody. You know, you don't ever know fully what they're going through psychologically. So I just try to really bring it back to facts. Um, and again, not to dwell on what you have been in the past, um, but to look at what you are right now and again, how can we move you forward to the potential that you could, and, and Chris said it, you know, uh, was it that people generally have reached about 50% of what their full potential is. I think it's, I think it's so true. And then, uh, you know, no, I, 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 I always, um, I become very surprised when I hear how comfortable people are with throwing words around. I actually, you know, whether it's a spouse, uh, parents, um, I've come across situations, I'm actually dealing with one right now, a, a long-term um, battle of, of parents spitting out hurtful words, um, and they just don't even, they've become numb, and they think they have this relationship where they can joke about it, but it adds up, and uh, I, I never, I, I'm always surprised to hear, like, wow, he would really say that to his daughter, you know, and um, I've seen it, I have it right now, um, so I've actually learned a little bit from this show as well. Well, at the same time, though, too, depression can be a good motivator. It's just, it's a terrible thing to say. But, I mean, I can say freely my, one of my motivations. I mean, of course, like, as a guy, my motivation yeah. was girls. Yeah. Like, that was a great motivator. But also it was, I want to prove these people wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, so that can be a good motivator. But at the same time, it's better to have positive motivation than yeah. negative motivation. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah, and what we see, like, week after week, everybody does have that one thing that they're just tired of or they want to change. And then... To change that, they get motivated, and that's what kind of brings them along their whole path throughout the whole entire year. They have to cling on to, you know, what they don't want anymore, what they've had overcome. So, definitely true. So, the thir halfway through, they did a 30-day check-in, and she already lost 45 pounds. So, it seemed like she was on her way to the goal, but with the stress of her girlfriend, she was having trouble, you know, losing the weight. And Chris asked her when they did the check and he was like, I feel like there's something else that you need to work on. What do you think it is that you need to work on? And she was like, you know what? My relationship with my girlfriend, I know it's not good. I love her. I'm not in love with her. I want to excel. She's complacent. So we saw the stress translating to the scale. And so at the 90 day weigh in, she did lose 74 pounds, but she missed her goal. Mm -hmm. Stress is a silent killer. Yeah. I mean, uh, bottom line is in relationships are one of the, the biggest ones, you know, relationships, jobs, um, you know, family life. But uh, once again, if, if you get complacent and you don't learn how to prioritize yourself, uh, you won't be the best spouse you can be. You know, I mean, you won't have the energy and um, you will be stressed out and exercise naturally uh, releases hormones that will decrease stress and make you feel better. And which ultimately, again, that will make a, a better relationship. But if you're not on the same page, you got to have common grounds at a common foundation. Um, you know, it makes it very difficult. Stress, uh, it will release cortisol and will hold on weight, especially around your stomach. It's, it's you know, it's a scientific formula mm -hmm. um, that stress plays in, into people's lives. Yeah, well, she definitely eliminated that stress. And we saw, you know, a change when she did do that. She got more focused. And uh, so Chris always does this thing, you know, they, at the 90-day win, the next day when they go back home, he does this little makeover. <laughs> he did a makeover. And at this point, she's looking really good. Yeah. She's already lost a lot of weight. 
She didn't make her goal, but she lost 74 pounds. Like, she looked awesome. And she dyed her hair purple. I was like, okay, get it. And so she went back home, and she was greeted by all her friends. How did you guys think she looked? She, at this point, she looks pretty great, great to me. I mean, I definitely, uh, I, lo I love the makeover concept. You know what I mean? It's a, it's, it gives you a good little milestone. Like, all right, here, here we are. This is what you're capable of in this amount of time. Like, just now is the time to, to capitalize and get moving and, uh, and see what you're capable of throughout the whole year um, or whatever it may be. But, you know, and also uh, it's a chance to inspire her friends and let her friends see, like, wow, this, this girl is putting in work. And it gives her a chance to, to, to get them behind her. So uh, it's also a, a means to build her up as well, uh, inspire other people. And that's a little bit of a gift. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, hey, you've earned this. Let's, let's, let's spice it up a little bit. Try to take back uh, the stress of, like, the show being on you, the weight being lost like let's let's praise you for what you've done yeah get it there for a second and then get back to work yeah I think that's really important and going into phase two she had a goal um, of losing 56 pounds that's what Chris told her and she had told Chris in phase one that she wanted to complete a triathlon that her mom does swimming and her dad does the biking and so she wanted to do all of that together um, and I thought I was like okay cool a triathlon but Chris was like no let's do the Ironman and I thought that was an extreme bold. challenge. Yeah. Yeah. 70 miles? Yeah. I thought that was pretty bold to say the least. Yeah. That was pretty intense. I, I don't I was saying I can't even run 10 miles. I think <laughs> I would freak out if I had to do 10, but 70? That's uh, intense. I mean, just like Chris said, you know, we don't ever really try to test our potential or, or we think we're at a certain point. We don't realize we can get higher, uh, you know, above that. And her 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 accomplishing that um, was so much more than the the physical um, it was just so much more mental to, to see, like, and she said it. She's like, if, if this is 50%, I'm afraid to see what 75% is. Mm -hmm. And bottom line is, like you said, you know, it sounds cliche, but it's for a reason. You know, if your dreams, if your goals don't scare you, chances are they're not, they're not high enough. And for her to want to see what 75% was, like, that's a motivating factor right there. And, yeah, she breezed through the swimming, and then she got on the bike, and she was doing good on the bike, but then she kind of started wobbling a little bit, but then she started drinking her nutrition, she did good, and then running, they were like, cutting it close there. They were like, you might have to stop running. Well, I, th I think it was uh, also important to kind of take a step back with the bike, you know, it's, it's a little symbolic to me, you know, to not breeze over the fact that like, she was feeling um, weak and shaky, and yeah. then the nutrition at the right time, you know, macronutrients timing is probably one of the biggest, um, it's the one of the biggest pieces to, you know, your weight loss challenge or, or reaching your goal. So she took that nutrition at the right time and then boom, she got an extra spike and she picked it up. So I just don't, I, I, I took that, like, don't miss that. You know what I mean? Nutrition at the right time is always so vital. Um, and then the running, you know, the running, I hear the last, I've never done a, a triathlon or an Ironman, but I hear the running um, at the end, it's, it's adrenaline, it's mental, mm -hmm. you know, your body physically shuts down, like, it, it shuts down, your, your mind has to tell your body what to do at that point, point. Um, and she, I don't think she was letting that one go. Yeah, yeah. so after phase two, she did another weigh-in, she lost 42 pounds, and she missed her marker again, mm -hmm. everyone's like, no, you could do it, Brandy, why do you feel she didn't make her marker? Um, this was phase three, correct? Phase three. I'm phase sorry. Three. Yeah, phase three. I, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't hear Miss Sergi. But this is this when she was lying to Chris. Yeah, we build up to. No, 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 no. Oh, it's right before. Right so before. she does her, you know, her marathon, and then it's at the end of phase two. It, phase three is the bad phase right. that with all the. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead here. I didn't mean so, to. So yeah, that. phase two at the end. You're right. You're absolutely right. I'm wrong. Um, I mean, it's it's just tough though, cause they they do lose a lot of weight. You know, mm -hmm. she really did push and lost a lot of weight. It's so hard, or it's so easy to be like, but she lost. A goal is a goal, and um, you know, bottom line is she could have done something. I feel uh, in between to push, uh, and again, not get as complacent. Um, you know, to really reach that goal. So I feel like she definitely was missing something in there. And um, it's so easy from an outside perspective to be like, but she lost this. Mm -hmm. You know what? A goal is a goal. I think and, uh, the difficulty with this goal was also her interpretation of what a fun day or a cheat day is. Yeah. Because really, like, guys, cheat days are there for you to eat what you want to eat, but not, like, everything yeah. you want to eat. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, I can't eat pizza because it's throughout the week. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't mean eat a whole pizza. It means, okay, you can have a portion of pizza. You can have a slice yeah. of pizza or She something. went all out. She had her cheetah bag, or Cheetos bag, and the mashed potatoes. That's that's what I was missing. I forgot that that part. Cheat days, uh, oh, man. 
Uh, cheat days are something I struggle with. I, I try to not use them the word cheat day because um, that's what happens. People, it's, it's cheating. Yeah, people, <laughs> I call it like a day of like enjoyment, like enjoy your stuff responsibly. Yeah. Enjoy the food that you like, um, get the taste that you like responsibly because mm-hmm. um, I feel like you said, just like just like Brandy did, you know, you could take that and um, he said it perfectly, interpret it the way you want and just indulge and, and just be completely debaucherous and, um, you know, I think that was, that was actually it. That was the key point that I think she missed her goal because of um, taking well, in more calories than she needed in that week. What is it? A pound is like what? Thirty five hundred calories is the yeah about the, yeah. So like people people make the mistake of thinking that okay, you know, like yes, your body digests food in a certain way, mm-hmm. and if you have instead of eating like bad food for seven days straight, if you eat it for one day, it's really bad food. Your body is not going to absorb all of the fat from that because it's uh, so not used to absorbing that kind of food. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't change the fact that you're still taking in massive amounts of sodium. You're still taking in massive amounts of other fats Which that it retain, will get. Yeah. And it just really will ruin you if you're like – because I, I prefer to be like you don't have cheat days. The yeah. way I do it is I don't have cheat days. Yeah. I'm just like – Oh, like this is happening. I can enjoy myself. Yeah. I don't have to worry about like, oh, it's not my cheat day. Yeah. It's just when the day comes along that you have the opportunity to enjoy yourself, you can just have a good time. Yeah, because yeah, I feel like if you deprive yourself of like any good food that you like throughout, you know, six days and then the seven day you just kind of indulge in it, it your body craves it all week. Mm-hmm. And then you, when you get it, you just want to keep eating more and more. Yeah, for me, it turns into the motivation. Like, the motivation sometimes turns into, like, I get a cheat day in five days. Like, I just, I try to stay away from that. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I I just don't think that should be the motivation. And, um, you know, bottom line, if you're trying to make this lifestyle change uh, and you're really throughout the week uh, developing these habits, your body actually starts to reject these foods. And you start feeling so terrible. Even myself, like, I'm a trainer, but... Um, I am by all means not perfect and and when I have my good streaks of eating really well and clean and whole uh, Whole foods for a month and then like for even for a day my energy levels drop I can feel it like my it's it's just a different feeling so um, I just think the concept of developing a lifestyle should not revolve around I get a cheat day You know what I mean? So I think that was a good concept of what you said. I haven't had bread in three months Mm -hmm. I ate a muffin the other day and it just made me feel absolutely sick to my stomach and I was like, you know what? It's just like a small thing, but even then like your body is just like what is this? (laughs) Yeah, I mean and that's how incredibly our bodies are designed um, you know, it, it's it's true. Uh, the, our bodies are a lot yeah. more sensitive, but we make them, um, you know, we desensitize our bodies when we just continuously abuse the foods that are out there. Um, our bodies just become immune to them. You know, that's what we're made to do, adapt. And um, Well, it's like a drug. You build a resistance. You build a, you build a tolerance. Yep. Like, honestly, f- this, the sodium, the amount of sodium and sugar and fat that we intake as human beings, as Americans, and in, in our daily lifestyle, if you don't watch what you eat, mm-hmm. you literally, be, you have an addiction to it. Mm-hmm. That's and, true. And when I cut it out, like when I stopped eating bread and stopped eating like fried food and anything like that, Two weeks in, you go through withdrawal. withdrawal yeah. You have a withdrawal. And that's you how feel I'm with Red Bull. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> but we, seriously, I'm addicted to we're it. We're sponsored by Go Girl here. Like we're provided Go Girl, and like I was drinking them, and because it would keep me awake, I have yeah. to work 16 hour days at the studio six days a week. Yeah. So you know that happens. But when I cut it out, because I was like, all right, I'm taking two or three of these things a I day. Headaches and headaches. Yeah. I was falling asleep. I couldn't stay up. It took me three weeks to get it all out of my system. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there, and it's, it, the bottom line is it's only getting worse. That's the scary part for me as a trainer, and that's um, not scary. It's scary, but it's also like I see a huge opportunity to make an impact um, in in such a, a, a negatively just boulder rolling down right now, um, going in such a, a poor direction. So um, you know, it definitely makes my job harder and. Uh, but like I said, this is what, you know, certain Chris, Chris does a great job at, at what he does and motivating. Yeah. And like you said, Chris is Chris is always right, man. He always tries to be understanding, but at the same time, like he's got goals to get. He wants you to see you do the best. And uh, I really admire him for that. Yeah. So let's go into the private investigator. <laughs> We've seen Chris do this before on episodes where he feels like maybe, you know, whoever he is training at the time isn't doing what they need to do. And... I was kind of mad a little bit at her at the fact that she kind of, she just lied. Yeah. 
straight up lied to Chris on the phone. The private investigator was sitting right there, and she was like, yeah, I worked out three hours today. Went and worked out with the personal trainer yesterday. I'm doing great. And I was yep. like, that's not true. I, I didn't like that she lied, but what do you think about I, even getting a private investigator? I, I give it to Chris, man. I, I, give, uh, I give him a lot of credit because I don't know if, you know, I don't know how you reacted behind camera because I would have been a little angry. You yeah. know what I mean? I, you, you develop a relationship with someone over a period of time. You're going through a very um, big journey in someone's life and they, they can lie to you very um, detailed. You know what I mean? It was almost like thought out. Mm -hmm. um, it was like premeditated. So that I think I, I would be a little hurt as Chris, but that's part of what we deal with. You know, if I had a dollar for every time someone lied to me about their nutrition, <laughs> man, whew, I, you know, I'd be rolling in the dough right now. But, um, you know, like I said, it comes down to she didn't reach her goal. And it was probably because she she wasn't just lying to Chris. She was lying to herself. You know? Yeah. And so. I'm the, sorry, the worst thing you can do is lie to yourself because yep. at some point you begin to believe it. It's, like, yep. mm -hmm. I personally, like, I, I had to stop lying. Like, mm -hmm. I literally would lie to myself, I'd lie to other people, and I'd start believing the lies. Yep. And then immediately, then you realize you're on a downward spiral or into everybody to hates you. Right? Yeah, yeah, and you're just kind of like, and now, like, even if it's super embarrassing, like, you just got to not lie at all yep. because habits are bad to have. Yeah, yeah, you're almost like kind of back trying to remember <laughs> what you even lied about in the first place. Well, then you'll justify everything. Like, yeah. I'll go to Chipotle and be like, you know what, this isn't bad for me because I have just steak and then I have just, it's just tomatoes and corn. And it's just like, you know, it's a little bit of sour Start cream. rationalizing. Yeah, you like, oh, these are all like healthy foods, yeah. singular. Like, so I'm good. Yeah. So it's but then you pile it up all the way to the top <laughs> and add some cheese on top of that too, yeah. please. Yeah, I mean, it's just a real um, demonstration of character. And it comes down to character, right. but, um, you know, at the end of the day, she she didn't lash out like I thought she maybe was. And I, I really, I, I, I like how she said, I, you know, I don't, I don't know how to, to stand on this right now. You know, she kind of just faded back a little bit instead of being like, you attacked him, you know, but. Well, I felt a little different. So, yeah, going in phase three was her nine-month weigh-in, and Chris kind of confronted her about, hey, you know, you said you were doing this, but you didn't. I hired a private investigator, and I felt like she got mad. And I didn't think she really had any reason to get mad. It's like you got caught in a lie. Yeah. Don't. And she was kind of. She said she was upset with Chris because she felt like he didn't have any faith in her. But at the end of the day, what he kind of thought was going on was what was happening. At the end of the day, he's just doing his job. Yeah. So that's the way I look at it. It's like a cop pulls me over for speeding. I was speeding. Give me a ticket. I can't get mad at that. I was speeding. You know, at the end of the day, if I'm trying to lose weight and he's my coach and he is trying to hold me accountable, I'm lying to him. You know, I can't be mad at that. You know what I mean? And I think that played into when she did weigh in, she missed it again for the third time. And... It was her body fat was 38.85% and it had to be 40% in order to get the skin removal. But I've seen Chris before in previous episodes kind of be like, okay, you didn't make it, but you lost a lot of weight. I'm going to give you the skin removal. Mm -hmm. But I felt like since she did lie and went behind um, his back and said that she was doing all these things, that he didn't give her the skin removal for that reason. That was my own feeling. I don't know. He, I, I, I don't blame him if he wanted to see if she would work harder to earn it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, like I said, that's a character thing. That's not just like a me and Chris thing. That's mm -hmm. that's a part of her. And, um, you know, if, if he's going to go above and beyond to, to vouch for her, uh, he doesn't want her to fall back into her ways. And yeah. um, I, I wouldn't mind being that, uh, you know, getting getting that proved to me yeah. after, after being lied to like that. I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Yeah, it was definitely emotional for her because since the beginning, we know like her arms were her sensitive, were sensitive to her, and that's the one thing that she definitely wanted to do. But like you said, I think it was good that Chris kind of took a stand and was like, "No, you're not going to get the skin removal. You kind of need to work for it, mm -hmm. and you haven't been." And I think it was good because we saw later on that it did motivate her, and she got to meet Miss America 2014. That was cool. Which I thought was really awesome, and you kind of saw her motivation there. She yeah. she had like her dream standing right in front of her, and she was kicking into gear, doing really good during the workout, and I think she just got motivated after that. Yeah, I mean sometimes it takes you know takes you to fail a few times. A lot of yeah. the times, unfortunately, it takes you to fail a few times to really succeed and. Um, you know, throughout that process, if Chris didn't address certain things, you know, she would be like, oh, I can get away with this. Mm -hmm. He didn't let her get away with it. And, and she realized it was either step up my game or fall back and, and let my character to build, um, build into that, um, 
the old character that she had. So yeah. I'm glad he didn't let that slide. And I, I think she had to fail in order to succeed. Yeah, and at the finale, her final way in, her goal was to be at 180 pounds, but she weighed in at the finale at 178 pounds. And I was like, yay, she finally made yeah. one of her goals. And I was really excited. Um, altogether, she lost 151 pounds. And I thought she looked amazing. She looked great. She did. She looked great. And that really bright pink dress. I like how she straightened her hair for, for a little bit of the effect there. I, although I like the curls. I, I was I was feeling the curls. But uh, she looked fantastic. I straightened my hair today in honor of Brandy. Yes. Normally, I wear my hair curly, too. But I wore it today for Brandy. Strained it. I think she looked fantastic. Um, I genuinely thought that was a dream come true for her. Yeah. You know, I, I truly, that was something that, um, you know, she said as a little girl, they would sit there and just, like, daydream about it. And mm -hmm. to see that come true, um, you know, that, that that literally right there, guys, that's a, that's a witnessing a dream come true. And it just, it should show to everybody that, you know, it's going to put a lot, it's going to take a lot of work, but you can really achieve your wildest dreams. Yeah, I thought it was really awesome. And she got the skin removal, which was awesome, too. And I loved how they put the little sash on her because she obviously wants to be a, a beauty queen. She's been in pageants all of her life, and they put Miss Extreme Weight Loss at the end mm -hmm. and put a crown on her. I thought that was, like, the perfect ending to the episode. You know, she said, you know, she didn't really live life until that point. And, you know, I'm curious to see... You know, what she really does think is important now. Does she think beauty pageants are important? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm definitely definitely curious to see how that journey really affected her because uh, it is a life-changing. It's not just a physical alteration. It, that is a mind transfer, tra you know, transformation right there. And uh, I'm really excited for her. She seemed very, like I said, positive throughout the whole thing. She said she wasn't going to quit. She didn't. She finished the Iron Man. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> yeah. the half Iron Man, that is a... a you know, I would have left the show right there for right. personally, but, um, you know, she did great. She got her goal. Um, she looked fantastic. She inspired many, you know, mission accomplished. What, what predictions do we have for her? What do we think? It, where is she going to go? Is she going to continue? What's and the predictions? Now, you're after Buzz TV. Predictions. What do you think is going to happen for Brandy? Do you think she's going to maybe get in back into beauty pageants? Is she going to get into a relationship? What do we want to see? For Miss Brandy. I think Brandy's gonna work on herself. I think she's. Uh, I think there's a little bit of fear to going back, so she she understands that it's a very real thing that people fall back into their ways, and um, I think she's still gonna stay focused on herself and just uh, try to max out her potential a little bit more. For you, just in somebody that you've trained ever, what is like the most exciting part of the transformation process? Um, most exciting part of the transformation process is. Um, like I said, I think Chris put it well in helping people understand their potential, you mm -hmm. know, and again, part of our job is to see what we have in front of us and then look forward and be like, that's what they can be and help them see our vision as well as, you know, combine their vision with my vision and then like let it meet in the middle along with just extend their quality of life. You know what I mean? What we do, like once you reach that goal, um, like that's when the battle begins. It's about keeping that off. And, um, you know, I've had people come back you know, I haven't been a trainer for over, you know, about 10 years now. It's when people come back eight years later and they're in better shape than they were when they left you. Mm -hmm. And it's like that's that's where it really comes into play to see if they carry that lifestyle on. And um, ultimately to know in my heart that they're going to live a longer life. That's awesome. We need to have you back on the show more often, Nick. I mean, I feel like you're a nutrition and weight loss expert. You make this show. You're like a little Chris Powell. I'm, I'm having fun here, man. I'm having fun. So. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We're here every Tuesday covering our favorite show, Extreme Weight Loss. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Jackie underscore Powell or on Twitter at Jackie with two E's underscore Powell. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming. Tell them where they could go work out with uh, you. But I have a small studio in uh, Sherman Oaks, uh, Biomechanics Body Shop, where you can find me online. Uh, Google Live Biomechanics. There's hundreds of free workout videos there as well. Instagram, Twitter, Nick, do work. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you so thanks, much. Thanks, Jackie Powell. And you guys can find me on Twitter, at Stephen Lemieux, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-L-E-M-I-U-X, or doing The Strain and MasterChef After Show here at AfterBuzz TV. That's awesome. See you guys. Bye, guys. See you later. Thanks. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. 
I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.